Hi, welcome to the Gilmore Gang. I'm Steve Gilmore, and uh, we've got uh, uh, some of the usual suspects and some of the way older Gilmore Gang uh, regulars, such as, uh, uh, let's talk first to uh, Craig Burton. Craig, uh, welcome. Hi, Steve. Thanks. Thanks for uh, for showing up here, and uh, somebody I think... I don't know whether Phil's been on the Gilmore Gang or on uh, News Gang in the past. But, News Gang, uh, thanks. Uh, well, I know you were on News Gang, but uh, I'm trying to remember. I think you were on a uh, the original Identity Gang show uh, in back in uh, 1987, I think it was. No, yeah, it was. 43. <laughs> uh, yeah, back back when rocks were new and we were talking about identity. Yeah, exactly. Um so I think you were on the Gilmore Gang then. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so welcome back, Phil Windley. Thank you. And uh, joining us from his uh, bomb shelter in uh, Half Moon Bay, <laughs> Robert Scoble. Hey, what's up? <laughs> okay, and we're waiting on uh, on Kevin Marks, who seems to be green now. So let's see if we can bring him in. Uh We'll just keep it a little loose here for a second. Sorry about the delays, but uh, that's very nice. Okay, Kevin, give us video, please. It's Google Wave. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to talk about that as soon as I uh, bring him in. Here's your audio. Uh, and, of course, Kevin Marks, the inscrutable, uh, indecipherable <laughs> Kevin Unintelligible. Marks. That's me. That's right. Frequently or amazingly. So you have you we have to figure out some sort of uh uh methodology for having you be able to proof the uh, transcripts. Uh so that you there can we go. at least indicate that it wasn't you who said that. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing. All right. All right. So uh let's see. Let's have a two shot with Scoble and uh, and Kevin for a second. Uh just before you you got here uh, Kevin, you, uh, uh, Scoble was, uh, showing Google wave. What's the whole point of this, Robert? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's like I am an email, um, had sex and had a baby. <laughs> and and, and yeah. so you have these, uh, waves that you can start and you can, uh, invite people in. So like this wave that says, hello, what? hello there, I could invite Kevin Marks into, and then um, we could have uh, a real-time conversation there, and I could drag in photos and videos and, and other things. It's almost like friend feed, but closer to email than, uh, than friend feed was. Friend feed and Twitter are meant for really public conversations. These are meant for uh, uh, working in a small group, like, uh, you, you know, at, at work. <laughs> That's how I would use it. All right. Well, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Kevin, what's what's your take on uh, what's my take on it on Google? Web? Um, now that you're not a, at Google, allegedly. <laughs> really allegedly. I'm well, I've got Google. something that I'm going to point out in just a second, which will tend we to all work for cast Google, don't? incredible doubt on your uh, credibility. But let's go ahead. <laughs> um, so for me, I think Wave is primarily about document editing and all the other stuff is built on top of that so what it does is it lets you edit documents um, in real time um, which we've sort of had with Google Docs and we've had with um, eth sub ether edit and etherpad and, and these things but what they did was they take they took that and made that into infrastructure and then built a bunch of other things on top of that so the the, the sort of emaily IME behavior is actually on top of document editing and that's that's why it is structurally quite different from Twitter or FriendFeed, because there is a core document that you're editing at any given moment, and you switch between them. It isn't just a flow of separate events that you stitch together afterwards. So the the the, the world view is the other way up. Everything is a document with edits in it, rather than lots of little messages that you're trying to correlate and make sense of. All right. Well, uh, the reason that I wanted you to uh, uh, sort of relate that to uh, a more abstract or uh, activity stream notion of what it is that we're in, uh, talking about here is okay. uh, the reason that we have uh, uh, Craig Burton and Phil Windley on the show. And I'm going to get to Phil in a second because he kind of started this 
with uh, a rather inflammatory post, but uh, uh, and, and we <laughs> all like it. Like, and we like it when Republicans get inflammatory. <coughs> uh, but uh, but Craig, uh, you, uh, what's your what's your take on this uh, uh, hijacking, if you will, of the uh, email space on the part of Google? Do, are you do you feel threatened by this uh, this project? A wave? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not even going to say until I get to play with it. Uh, I, I doubt I feel threatened by anything that Google would do at this point. Um, there seems to be a lot of concern about Google, but, you know, I don't think they could could uh, figure out anything to really threaten me. But um, so bring it on. So... Uh all right, let's get Phil in here, and he can sort of state the thesis, and then I think, uh, Craig, you have a sort of a little uh, object lesson in, in why you're not so threatened by this stuff. Well, I, I was talking more about SideWiki than Wave. Yeah, well, so uh, let me get uh, Phil in here. You, let's see, get a two-shot of, of uh, Phil and, uh, and Craig. Uh, Phil, very briefly, would you discuss your SideWiki post and, uh, and why you feel what you feel about uh, that technology? Yeah, I, I actually wasn't, um, I mean, I knew SideWiki came out, wasn't paying much attention to it, really. But then, uh, you know, there was some Twitter commentary about, uh, oh, you know, Google is defa I mean, Google's defacing websites, they're putting graffiti on the web. And I started thinking about it, and I sent a, a, a tweet back and said, well, you know, it's not actually, they're not putting the comments on your site, they're talking about your site. It just so happens that the browser is displaying them both concurrently, and people seem to not buy that argument or not like it, and I think the issue is one of metaphor. I mean, when we think of websites in terms of land and property, then the only metaphor we have is graffiti, but in fact, I think there are different metaphors we can use, and I, I'm not threatened by people commenting about my site somewhere else on the web and the browser bringing those up side by side, and so I uh, put up a post that kind of described my point of view and ended it with a, um, I don't know, a, uh, what, do you, what do you call these things? Uh, uh, you know, like uh, you tack them to the church door. Um, anyway, manifesto. I, manifesto, <laughs> there we go. So anyway, I, I it's said... A, I, uh, it's a windly bowl, I think is how they <laughs> described it in the old days. <laughs> yeah. Not the so, same uh, manner. Uh, so what, Pope Phil... So what I said was I claim the right to mash up, remix, annotate, augment, and otherwise modify web content for my purposes in my bruiser, bruiser, browser. Bruiser, <laughs> <laughs> oh, your browser. I was reading ahead and the tool. In my browser, using any tool I choose, and I extend the same privilege to everyone else. If you want to take my content and fiddle with it in your browser, go ahead. Now, I think you were reacting to uh, some comments by... Uh Dave Weiner about uh, you know, his contention that this was uh, part of a Google takeover of you know, the Google is essentially the new uh, Microsoft and that we all need to be afraid of Google, uh, is, <laughs> which is hilarious. You know. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's important to separate out the the idea of can you take content and in your own browser mash it up in some way that's useful to you. And whether or not SideWiki is a good idea or whether or not Google ought to be doing this, I mean, those are different questions from do I have the right to take two different web feeds and put them next to each other, which is essentially all I'm doing when I install Google's toolbar and have SideWiki running. All right, so Craig, you have an analogy. Yeah, well, and, and to preclude my analogy, I'll say that... Uh, what we're in the midst of is shifting from content is king to context is king. And what SideWiki is letting us do is create a context between what someone else said and what other people in a row say about it. And context is much more powerful than depending on context. I, I get a, you know, I'm watching uh, Doc Searle's ambivalent piece on SideWiki saying, well, I'm not sure I like it or don't. And uh, everybody there, and there are people weighing in on both sides. And it's, I, I can only say that the people who keep saying that it's evil I haven't looked at it yet. They're, they don't know for sure what it is. And while I, when I was going through it with Doc, I found out that he hadn't quite looked at it yet either. Um, so 
Uh, so he was uh, vociferously uh, defending his right to be semi uh, ignorant about the subject. Right. <laughs> well, and, and it comes. It turns out that what he was really against was was Google having something that put that's near my page, and and I said, well, you know, let, let's drop drop the vendor and you know. What what I'm against step, with step this, away from the product. What. what this is Robert Scoble. What I'm against with this, and I have side wiki up on my screen, is that with other commenting technologies, um, you had to go to your site to read your opinions, or you had to go to a wiki, or you had to go somewhere else. You had to go off of my site if I didn't allow comments um, to see your opinions. This gives your opinions distribution on top of my content. And that I find top, it's not next on top to your, of your content. content. It's to the it's side. No, you don't it's, have to look at it. Turn it off. No, but like I'm, but now everybody has a tool that they can use to find other people's con content, and I have no way to re to remove these things or control them. Well, um, exactly, but we shipped that with Technorati five years ago. This isn't anything particularly new. It's just another blogging service from Google. I mean, uh, exactly. Technology exactly. never got used by anybody. What do you mean you, and, and what do you mean that you don't have any way of being able to remove it? I mean, you could, you know, go downstairs uh, to the uh, electric box and shut down your house. I mean, it's not <laughs> no, like but it's still there. And I, my page you. is giving distribution to these things. No, that's no, not no, true. No, it, no, it isn't. It, it, it absolutely is. You come over to my page with SideWiki, and you get to see everybody's crap. If somebody puts a puts a hateful, you know, if, Nazi if thing there, but, it's but there Robert, for everybody Robert, to see. Robert, and there's Robert, no Robert, if everybody's putting crap on, then what is the value of that service to anybody, and why would they continue to use it? If it's a sp if it's a stream of, of crap, uh, you know, or spam. Uh, it, it's not going to do well for uh, for Google or anybody else who tries this. I don't understand why. Uh, Robert, do you realize how much you sound like an old school newspaper person complaining about blogs there? Or, or listen to yourself. Or MPAA, a absolutely. Your uh, you know what? It's, it's a new blogging there is system. Still, in this world, there is still uh, the right of a copyright holder to control his Content and to and be well, the wait, one to on, decide who gets hold distribution. On. You're putting it on the. You're putting it on the web. Uh, you want to control how my browser renders your content. You release, but you're not controlling how people use it. I mean, that's uh, like saying that uh, if uh, if somebody says something, uh, you know, I'd like to have Craig give the analogy that he was uh, that he told me, it's just so that we sure. can frame the, the discussion a little bit more in terms of something other than the alleged hijacking of the page. Go ahead, Craig. Yeah, I remember, uh, you know, when we used to go to conferences, um, we as attendees would sit in the audience while the speakers go on and on, and hoping for at the end for uh, uh, to be able to stand up and say something at the mic, and we may have collected our thoughts or had a good enough question to do that. And then I remember very distinctly with some of the people in this group, including Dave Weiner, who's not in this group, of course, but in this whole conversation and Doc Searles and going to a conference in particular Esther Dyson's conference and and instant messaging was now everybody was up on the instant messenger and there was this huge back channel going on behind the con the conversation of the speakers and so by the time the speakers got done and somebody got up to ask a question that man the, the amount of conversation that had gone on in the background was huge uh, and to me to, to me sidewick is just a back channel for your content if you you know how you you can't stop it it's going to go on anyway the the fact that you're a carrier for it is the same as if you went to the conference you're a carrier for the back channel you you know now if you're the, put the, it the out there there it is the difference there is the the back channel at all these conferences usually wasn't up on stage you had to find it and go somewhere else to find it and uh, 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 to participate oh, in it. Oh, it please. Wasn't up on stage. You're it saying wasn't that the effort update. to go find it, it is what this is? It wasn't the content. It wasn't on top of the content Robert, uh, that was you being really presented believe, on stage. You really believe that in the <laughs> era of web technology that we can create artificial barriers by having friction of having people not be able to find stuff? For the I last mean, eight years, on, we have. That's what the web is all about. Yeah. No, it's not. You know, this is this is 
Well, okay. we haven't had health care reform for the last eight years, and we're going to get it. <laughs> we're going to get it now. Uh, you you so sure about that? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get some, some reform. We're not going to get it. Are going down, <laughs> sucker. They're going down. <laughs> Pre-existing conditions. Keep your job. So, okay. <laughs> Leave your job. You still are covered. Yeah, that's changing. <laughs> right now, next six weeks. <laughs> Let's hope so. Okay, SideWiki, back to that. It's a <clears throat> blogging system. What it does is it looks for comments and shows you them. Now, I wrote something called th that does this five years ago with a bunch of other people called Technorati that help you find people talking about your stuff on their blogs. SideWiki does this too. In addition, they added the ability for you to post your own comments to another blog that happens to be on your Google profile and draw those in as well. So it took the show me what people have said about this page, which we've had the Technorati plugin, the Sphere plugin. There's 20 of them that you can put in your browser that does this. Um, they've they've done that as a toolbar. Um, this, but the second thing they've added is the ability for you to post comments back into that system and, and show them there too. Now people missed the first part of showing comments. Um, if you've if you've got SideWiki, go to 140.com because that's a good example of this. You, you know Laura's site 140.com. O n e f o r t y. Um, if you look at that and hit SideWiki, what you see is all the blog posts that were about 140.com last week when it was launched. And you see the blog posts from TechCrunch and Mashable and so on that, that were writing about it because um, SideWiki said, oh, this is about this site. I'll, I'll show you it there, which is very like the old who's writing about me thing we did at Technorati. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and so you can, you can see those. You can also go in there and add your own comment to the page and have that pop up there too. Um, so it's it's actually doing this cross web correlation thing um, that you know that we were doing at Technorati, but they're doing it with Google's crawl, which is probably more thorough than ours is. The it's other subtle context. Th now wait, wait a second. I never remember having a Technorati toolbar that showed it, showed them on the page when I went to 140.com. Like oh, I'm there, there is we, one. We, There's still one. We, you just didn't yeah, we built one. It. Yeah. We, we built one. You may not have installed it. The, you know, the difference uh, here is Google does yeah. it. Everyone pays attention. Right. Um, so yeah. this, is the, this is the theory that because Google is successful, that somehow what they're doing is bad as opposed right. to so, somebody so, else yeah. who the other doesn't get the leverage. The other thing that does, now th this, is, this is a really fun one. Um, if you comment on a block of text, um, it correlates the comment with that block of text. If it sees the same block of text somewhere else, it shows the comment there too. Um, I, I, th there's a, I have to dig some URLs out to show you this. But I, I commented on the, the Douglas Adams piece that I'm always quoting. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll put it in the chat room. Yeah. Oh, wait, you can't put it in the chat room because that's a, a foreign uh, you know, I'll stream put it in of information that oh, yeah, uh, on Building 43 is yeah. right might alongside have a this uh, showing that friend so. next to their blog, and that'd be awful. Then what would happen? Yeah, we're no, being so hijacked if by you uh, look at If you look feed. at that Douglas Adams page, and there's a comment from me there on a piece of it, now, um, now, let me find the other link. Hold on. You guys are pretty funny because FriendFeed, you would have to know about FriendFeed to find the chat room. Well, Robert, <laughs> you better stop talking about FriendFeed then because there are a lot of people who know about it now. <laughs> so, not you, enough, man. You're, you're not just not part enough. of the problem. You are the problem, Robert. <laughs> Robert, Robert is always the problem. No. <laughs> So hey, you, somebody you see, has to be the contrarian here. Arrington's not on yet. You know? <laughs> so, so you see that one. Hang on. I, I, Arrington agrees with us as far as I can tell. I read yeah. that article. I, I don't know what... Uh... Although so, he did complain about all the comments on TechCrunch. He, he did make fun of that. You know? he so Robert, fun if you look at that one, there's a comment from me, right? On Where? The, in the sidebar. In, in, the, in the side wiki. For what? For 140? No, for that, for that thing I just sent you. Oh, did you not get it? Hang on. I, I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking. Bit, Bit.ly slash capital D capital A. Well, when we grow up, we're going to actually put, we can put web pages on the screen, but I just, uh, we're just having fun uh, with four people right now. Well, Robert yeah. was pointing, the, pointing, his, pointing his camera at his screen. Yeah, no, I understand but, the technology. I didn't say What that. were you just sending? Because I didn't get anything. What do you, where did you send it to? I put it in the in the friend feed chat. I'm not in the friend feed chat. Go to building 43, <laughs> Robert. Have you heard about that? <laughs> I'm not in the well, friend feed. Now, Robert, if I'm you trying put to that camera in your screen, are you artificial? Do you want to put it in wave? Yeah. <laughs> <Look at it. laughs> yeah. I'll put it in a wave for you if you like. 
Uh, hold on a second. Let me get to the friend feed chat because I wasn't even in the friend feed chat because I'm trying to pay attention <laughs> to what's going on in real life here. So, you know, competition is leading to ADD because we have too many choices now. I, I can't tell which uh, is worse, uh, having that choice or not having choice. All right, now i got to open it up. Hey, Craig, what are you doing? Oh, my it. example's just gone away. Oh. Huh. I'm going to go and beat up some of that Google now. Right. Yeah, Steve, I tell people that I have a tension surplus disorder, and in today's day and age that that's a real liability. <laughs> so what is that? ASD. ASD. Yeah, AS ASD. Attention surplus. <laughs> Pay attention. One thing. All right. Well, while until you know that, so while Kevin and Robert. Are, okay, my are demo seems to have gone astray. URLs. So anyway, so uh, let me let me explain. Tell you what uh, it does, rather than show you. Seeing it's showing you is a bit hard, like hard work. What it will do is, if I select a piece of text and put the comment on that, if it finds that same piece of text somewhere else, i.e. someone's quoted that page, it'll show the comment next to that as well. So Ooh, again, wow, it's using... that's cool. So if, if, if there's a political speech or something you comment on in one place, that same comment sh can show up somewhere else. So I didn't another know one it did that. I like that. So, so it's, what am it's, I, I'm, I'm on that page right now. What am I supposed to look... I see your okay. comment here. Douglas Adams got it right. Now, somewhere I had... That same text on another blog post. I found this. No, no, I can't. Yeah, it's down lower. It's down lower. If you if you scroll down with SideWiki, what you'll see is there's a little. Um, it says eight other places or something. Conversation. Yeah, SideWiki entry about this part of the page, and then when you click on it, it'll actually highlight the text that the but comments it also, it about. Says, it says also right shown. Right right but here. it also says also shown on seven other web pages. Now, of course, what it doesn't do is tell you which seven other web pages, which is yeah. slightly interesting. Um, there we go. So, yeah. so, because this this is this has been quoted a lot because you know I quote it and it, you know, it, it's, it, this is this. If you haven't read this Douglas Adams piece, just read it because it's it's beautiful. It was ten year, written ten years ago and it's all still true. Um, but just let me interject something. Uh, Matt Terenzio sure. is saying I don't even understand the concept of chat gathered around the Gilmore Gang anymore. Do they mean the comments on this post? Yes. Yeah. Where you are typing is what we're talking about. If yeah. you go to building forty three dot com slash real time. Uh, you will see it displayed next to the streaming video of this show. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm just using it in in, in friend feed. <laughs> I need to slow down. Ah. Yeah. Is Get this better. why I'm unintelligible? <laughs> well, you know, it's a trade-off because we can understand it, but it also helps the uh, sales, in quotes, of the uh, of the uh, YouTube video, and then of course the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the the simulscribed uh, transcribers are going insane at the moment, or will yeah. be in a couple of hours. They just, they just just mark me as in unintelligible, and they're, and they're done. You know, right. it's, it's redacted. I think. Yeah. Or, what was the thing? Uh, the Nixon tapes were uh... <laughs> redacted. Yes. Yeah. No expletive deleted. There it is. So, so so to 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 Kevin's point that he made about this comment that he left here on the Douglas Adams site, I made uh, a blog comment just a, a little bit ago about, uh, you know, the, the China censorship where they're talking, that we're, I don't know if you saw this, but they're requiring uh, positive identification with real ID, real names of people before they can comment on news sites in China now, which obviously is an attempt to um, do away with dissent, right? Make you think twice before you leave a comment because we're going to know who you are. Things like SideWiki, not just SideWiki, I mean anything, Technorati does the same thing totally show the futility of that. I think, I mean, that's it. I mean, there's, there, was, there was an assumption a while back that you can control the conversation about your stuff. Um, and this, you know, this hasn't been true since we had blogs. Um, suddenly, if somebody sh blocks the comments down, the, the discussion moves somewhere else, moves out onto the wider web, and it spreads out. So when Seth Godin did um, his... I'm going to take your brand and, and, and charge you $400 a, a month to um, maintain it on the web for you thing last week. On his blog, um, people discussed that elsewhere on the web, wrote about it, and he had to back down. And yeah, they were using SideWiki to comment on his blog, but mostly they were writing blog posts elsewhere and discussing it on Twitter and connecting back and forth. So the, thing, the point is the conversation is always going along in parallel, and SideWiki is just another way of surfacing that. Um, so I, I'm... I'm you know, I'm I'm fairly sanguine about it. I think it's interesting. The couple of things that they've done there of correlating the words is really interesting, and that would be quite hard for anyone other than Google to do because Google's the only one who crawls almost everything. Um, so that that's them providing a service for us from the, the their you know giant web crawling that's already going on. 
All right, so Robert Scoble, why don't you read what you just typed? Uh, I just said the difference between uh, SideWiki and Echo and Discuss is that Discuss and Echo give control over what gets displayed to the blog owner. So if somebody writes a, a racist post on Building 43 or something, I can, as the blog owner, I can delete that post. On SideWiki, I don't believe I have any control to uh, delete things. You can mark it as abuse. Yeah, and then what happens? Somebody I don't know. I mean, but, Google but I has to see it. But Robert, I think it's interesting that you think you ought to have control over the conversation about what you I, write. I, yeah. I do. Uh, and more and more now that, that I've been on the Internet, I, I think you need control. You, you can't control what people say about you. <laughs> you don't yeah. have it. You're never going to have you, it, Robert. You never can have it. it. I, I absolutely do right now. Well, I don't. No, you absolutely don't right, right now. Sorry, well, you I don't. Do. Robert, well, people, are talking, people are talking Robert. about you everywhere. I can delete your comment. I Robert, have what, what do I have on my screen right now? I can now. delete your comment on my items. Robert, what I do you have, have on my screen right now? You can't delete it from my blog. What's that? What do you, you can't uh, delete it from my blog. What do you, you see on my screen Twitter. right now? No, no, but I don't give distribution to you. Nobody can find you from my blog. If they're following me, they can't click on a link over to you. They can use that. There's 20 tools that does this. You're not showing the comments. Google showing the comments in a separate frame in the browser. You're not giving distribution to anything. All the, I mean, Wrong. technology did the same thing. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. When you're using SideWiki, I am giving distribution to those comments because you come over to my blog, you type <laughs> in my blog address, and now all of a sudden you see everybody's comments. And I no, now lo, no longer have control of those comments. The same thing. I could type in your blog address to Technorati and see everybody's comments that they wrote on their That's blog. That's true, but how many people actually knew about Technorati? Oh, so you're saying uh, everybody? Different. What are you we talking about? We were very famous at one point. Break. Nobody <laughs> knows Technorati. All right, now hold on, hold on a second. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying if nobody knows about it, it's okay? Yeah, no, he is I saying don't, that. It's you not can find it somewhere ridiculous. else. You're in control it's of that space. It's simpler than this. First of all, uh, Robert, <laughs> why do you support FriendFeed since it does exactly the same thing that you're talking about <laughs> Google doing that you don't like? Well, because now, nobody Friend knows gives, about it. These FriendFeed Friend 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 conversations. Friend delete, if, if I start a node, I can delete comments underneath my nodes. Uh -huh. You can delete comments on... Uh, if you start a node, right? So that means that's right. So that's if, my brand. I started the node. I started the conversation. I okay. can control that. Now, if you start a node, I have forty-seven thousand or forty-nine thousand followers. You have how many followers? I don't know, but my followers, I'm giving distribution to certain things to, and I decide what those people are going to see out of my stuff. Uh, out of your stuff. Yeah, if you're if you're only following me, I decide what what you're gonna see. So, in other words, uh, all the comments that flow through on any other system to my machine while I'm watching your site are somehow under your control. No, anything under my name, un under my uh, in friend feed. Let's stay on friend feed. If I start a node, I control all the comments that happen in my node. So, if you're only following me. I have control of every uh, of almost everything you see, except for when you get pulled stuff in through friend of a friend or whatnot. Right, or any of the other uh, programs that I'm running that flash information. So, no. you know, right now. No, uh, that's that's separate from my node. You had to choose to go there. I I didn't take you. No, there. I'm going. I'm choosing to go to your site, and I'm sitting there on your site. And now, what you're telling me is, is that everything else that's on my screen, no, uh, is is somehow you would prefer that it was under your control. No, if you go to the Huffington Post, the Huffington Post has control of what you're seeing. Okay, on all right. The so now, I, now I understand, and this is, I think, what Phil talks about when he talks about the, uh, well, I'll call it the politics of location. Is that true? Right. Okay. Right. So this is the notion that your site is a location that you control. Right. Which flies in the face of everything that I do on a daily basis with my computer. Nobody has control of what I look at except me. That's so, true. So, so but, I, but I have control of that viewport. When you go to scobalizer.com, that's no. me. That's not. Have that's not Kevin me. Rose. I that's not Leo Laporte. It's not Robert. Amanda Chapel. It's me. 
It's my browser, Robert. I have control over the viewport. I, absolutely. In your browser, you have to enter Amanda Chapel in, or you have to enter KevinRose.com, or you have to enter Leo Laporte to go to those things. If you choose to come to me, you're, at, you're asking your browser to display me and my brand to you. Robert, you're stuck on browsers, how browsers have worked in the past, not how they might work in the future, in the same way that RIA I'm was also stuck on, stuck on copyright and my ability as a communicator to control my voice and my vision and say, this is mine, this is my little space, and nobody gets to overwrite but it you, and you change can say it and that, it and steal it and Robert, do something when you post Robert. something on the web and you allow other servers to flow that data through and deliver it to requests from people on the web, you don't control it anymore. You, he, the copyright issue is completely bogus. Uh, it has nothing to do with copyright. I mean, you, we, you're living in la la land, Robert. To think if you can maintain control of your little space. Okay. So, so can I, can I, like, Got maybe duck this a little bit? Yeah. So the fact of the matter is, the web so I, has doesn't have locations. It has resources, and right. it has uniform resource locators which are used to locate those resources. Right. Now, we call them addresses, but they're not really addresses. They're just unique identifiers for a resource on the web. Right. All the slide wiki is doing is taking that unique identifier and finding all of the comments about that unique identifier and giving me, as a user, the choice of saying, show me all of the things that people have written around this unique identifier. Now, the fact that you created the identifier, the fact that you attached to it to resource, doesn't mean that somebody else can't write about that same resource using the same identifier. True, the but it does, if, if you write about something, you have to find your own distribution. You don't get to get my, access not, to my distribution channel that I've built up over time. Distribution. They're using Robert, Google. it's already happened. Why are I you know. arguing what you can't Can control? I, it's done. I it's know. over. This is, this is actually a critical point because it's Robert's, Robert's what making are you this sue him? here. Robert's claiming it's his distribution, but it's not Robert's audience. The audience is everybody who has a Google toolbar installed. It's Google's audience. Google is the one that's distributing the toolbar. Google's the one that's convincing people to do that. It's Google's audience, not yours, Robert. Your audience are the people who come to your blog. The people who see SideWiki are the people who have Google toolbar. True. You don't own that audience. That's Google's audience. And you're not right. providing them distribution. Google's providing the distribution by getting people to download the toolbar. Okay. And if you think you can control it, I, you know, I'd like to see how I'm you hearing, do I'm hearing the apology coming. Just kidding. No, no. Ah, no, it's not an apology. I wanted to keep it going. I, I, I'd love to see how you're going to do it, Robert. Why, why don't I just give you guys my uh, WordPress uh, login password so you guys can... Well, I mean, you give, us, you give everybody your phone number, so There's why not? Point, Robert, I don't need it. I don't need your WordPress login. I can use Google Sideways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, well, not, radio, and, anything. You know. And also, you know, while you're at it, turn off your comments because, uh, you know, you're giving control to, you know, random... Uh, lunatics all around the universe. No, no actually, uh, on my comments on discuss and echo, and that was the point I was making. I do have control. I can delete you if you're racist or or if you just piss and, me off. And you still can, <laughs> which means that people who come and leave things on your site, which are clearly under your control, you can control. But people who leave things somewhere else on the web, you can't. Uh, yeah. I think I think it's just fascinating that. Three or four years ago, we were having this same discussion about the RIIA and yeah. why their business model was old and they couldn't see how things were going to change. And now it's the bloggers that are having exactly the same problem. <laughs> it's my copyright. Any more than no, the RIIA. I'm sorry. I, I never said that you're with, with music that you should be able to stick whatever you want on top of music and, and use somebody else's work and make money off of that. Uh, you know. sorry, where did the money come from? Uh, no, no that? Where's the money? A mashup. A mashup. A mashup of some kind. That, yeah, that, but, that's illegal. It's not I, illegal. I've it's never not, argued that you should be able to do that. RIA argues it is, yeah. Whereas Lawrence Lessig says, let him have at it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but he, just, he came up with com Creative Commons. If you stick something in a Creative Commons, go for it, you know? Yeah, but, but, the, but the, the, there's, the, every metaphor, as Doc points out, is at its core wrong. That's why I have a metaphor. Right? And so 
the only thing that side wiki is is side wiki. And so all our metaphors are going to be wrong. We're going to find problems with it. But the point is, I don't have to deface your site. I don't have to change your content. I don't have to do anything to it in order for SideWiki to work. All I have to do is download it exactly the same way that you've given me permission already to download it, and then download something from Google and put them side by side in the same browser. That's all I have to do. I'm not, I'm not doing anything to your copyright. I'm not, I'm not changing your site. Okay. I, I disagree. I disagree, but that's fine. Well, what I'd like to... Uh, and my point is it doesn't matter if you disagree, it's over. That, it's, that is true. I will agree on that point. It, okay. it doesn't matter. Uh, All right. So, although, uh, remember, Microsoft came out with, uh, right. with uh, although, uh, something that added Microsoft something, added something onto the, links. Uh, what do they call it? Um, God, in the, early, in the early 90s, they put a little... Uh, um, uh, box on top of links and that got killed and got taken out right uh, and some of the people uh, i remember dave weiner myself and others uh, were opposed to that because uh, essentially that was rewriting the text under the control of yeah. uh, word or office which at that time was uh, had a monopoly uh, it, kevin can you either tilt down or or stand up yeah one nice. or the other Sorry, Thanks. I'm uh, actually looking at the, my, my own reflection. <laughs> no, it's, you know, <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, I need something to rest my laptop on so I can <laughs> like that. That's much better. Yeah, uh, yeah we, I think we were all opposed to that because we had no choice uh, in those days. Yeah. Uh, there was no Google. There was no. Uh, I think Weiner's uh, thesis today, however, uh, is that uh, Google is the new Microsoft. And I, I think that's patently incorrect uh we are we're using on this uh experience whatever you might want to call this uh, yeah. combination of technologies we're using uh the facebook monopoly we're using the google monopoly we're using the uh if you go to our our uh, news gang app which is going to come out of beta hopefully in the next day or so yeah uh we're using silverlight monopoly microsoft monopoly uh, it's a it's a sweet it's a symphony of monopolies that we're using silos so, you know yeah the the other difference between that er earlier technology was this doesn't change my my content it just gives distribution to other people's content um so well, it's uh, it's a it's a lot a cleaner. I mean, I, if Google actually went in and changed my links and added ads or something like that, I you know I think everybody would well, be a lot. I mean, I think there. we should I, I think we should round up the guy that invented the widget and have him shot, because you know what happened was is that the web page started to become a much more malleable experience. Yeah. Right. So are we going to roll that back? Nah. I mean, it, you know the you know the Republican uh, health care uh, uh, reform, which is uh, don't get sick, and if you do get sick, then die quickly. <laughs> so, are we going to apply that to uh, to the widget crisis? Let's you know, don't use them, and if you do, uh, then. I'm, know, I'm actually not that upset about this because it, what you guys will uh, find if, if this got death panels for widgets. Yeah. If, if this <laughs> side wiki thing actually gets very popular, and and I I don't think it will because it only works on Firefox right now, and and personally, all my web surfing is on my iPhone. Yeah. And, <laughs> so. and, and like Gmail, that didn't get popular and only worked on a thousand machines to begin with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but let's say it does get popular, uh, people will use it to try to get distribution for their ideas, and. Uh, i.e. it will get spammed to death really quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I, the business model issue. No, no but I, it's, I think it's, that's exactly it's not right. It's a business model. You'll come over to TechCrunch, and all you'll see is damn spam spam ads, and people will well, have so to that's, sit So that's the interesting thing for me, is, is it, it moves to the, the filtering question of which comments do you see, which is the, the interesting problem, and that's where they could learn something. So what they've done so far is they've done a... a we're Google. We know how to know how to rank. But we already have, have right Twitter, top. man, where we can see just the people's comments that we exactly. want to see. Exactly. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, if if SideWiki um, looked at my social graph and said, "Okay, here's the comments from the people you care about on that site," that would be useful. That would be really valuable. Um, now, they probably <laughs> oh, have I really don't want to see do your that. comment on my on my porn sites. <laughs> Well, I'm unlikely to be visiting your porn sites, Robert, so don't worry about it. So you're not commenting. 
I mean, I, it, it, to, to sort of get this serious, uh, there was a company, um, God, it's in Boulder, Colorado. It's now called OneRiot, but they used to be a, uh, a, a browser plugin that you could surf the web together with your friends. I, I tried it, and it was just really weird. <laughs> I don't think normal people are going to use that. But and it failed in the marketplace. Already, so. Yeah. Charlene Lee was showing me one at least a year ago that, that did this. Yeah. So, so, so let me let me pose a hypothetical because, in, in hopes of making maybe maybe making the conversation uh, keep uh, being argumentative, uh, um, Robert said something uh, about. We you haven't know, had a lot of trouble they, with uh, keeping yeah, argumentative. They were so. changing my content <laughs> and putting ads on my site. Then I then I'd really think that was evil. So let me ask you a question. Here's a hypothetical. Yeah. Uh, suppose that I created an extension to to a browser that when you went to Amazon would show you whether or not the book you were looking at was available at your local library. I mean, take the John Udell Library lookup bookmarklet one step further. Is that yeah. evil? <laughs> if you, yes, it is evil. It's uh, useful. It's useful, <laughs> and, it's, and, and, uh, and it exists. Yeah, I, I'm sure if you were at Amazon, it would be evil. I, you know, when I ran a retail store, I'm we, we kept people would from like taking it. pictures of our prices to keep the competitors from matching them. So, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, the somebody the would find that evil. That yeah, if it's useful and it's serving the purpose, and I'm installing it, why does anybody have the right to say I can't? You know, coming uh, from a Republican, that's a really interesting question. Yeah. A Republican? <laughs> don't bring that up. No, 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 the stereotype of the Republican is that is they, they want to get into your bedroom. Favorite. And this is about getting into your digital bedroom, basically. I mean, yeah. what right is it of anybody to tell me how to use my computer? I mean, it's just outrageous. Well, I think that's his point. I, I, I agree. I was amplifying it. It's called you yeah. know, a show. We're pretty on a show. It's called entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Un I I find it so curious that the Robert Scoble is saying that being able to have a back channel on your blog is evil. I you know I I don't get it. Well, let me ask a que uh, a technical question, since we've strayed into drama suddenly. Um, <laughs> you know, which of course we don't do anymore. Right, Robert? Yeah. It's much more fun without drama. <laughs> uh, it's good as a soporific as well. Uh, uh, Phil, and I, I think, uh, uh, Craig, you're uh, involved in Kinetics as well. Kinetics? Yeah, Kinetics. Kinetics. Could you guys explain uh, what you're doing there? Because I think it's somewhat obvious that one of the reasons that you've jumped all over this is because it might have to do with your business model. Yeah, well, in, in, yeah, in light of full disclosure, I'd have to say that uh, one of the reasons that I was interested in this and was, I mean, I've thought about it before now, is that that's exactly what Kinetics allows people to do, is create browser extensions, um, the various ways of doing that, but essentially create browser extensions that modify the user's experience inside the browser. Uh, you know, I gave the example of library lookup on Amazon and said it was hypothetical, but actually it's not hypothetical. I have a demo that does that right now. And so um, that's exactly what Kinetics is doing, is allowing developers to create those kind of what we call purpose-centric experiences for users inside the browser. Okay, so this, this comes out of the... Uh, you know, the work that you've been doing and lots of other people have been doing around identity uh, for uh, quite some time. Uh, and just in a, by way of disclosure, why don't you describe uh, uh, the Internet Identity Workshop and uh, uh, its relationship to this discussion? Yeah, so the Internet Identity Workshop is a, it, it, we're on number nine right now. It'll happen again in November from the 3rd to the 5th. And it's a, been a really good collection of people getting together to uh, talk about Internet-wide identity, not, not uh, enterprise kind of identity issues, but things like OpenID, um, uh, card space, those sorts of things. Information cards are all, have all been part of the conversation and continue to be. The, the reason I think it's connected to this, or, or what connects it to this, is the idea that in order to create a cross-site experience, one that uses content from multiple sites, you have to be able to have some kind of identity. You know, in the case of SiteWiki, Google's doing that through the toolbar. The fact that you have the toolbar installed is essentially the identifier, 
And then the second piece of identity that SideWiki uses, as I mentioned earlier, is the URL that identifies the content and matches it up. And so having Internet-wide identity is critical to being able to create these cross-site experiences. All right. So, uh, uh, Craig, what uh, what's your... Uh I know that you're really the godfather of this whole thing. Uh, so you want to explain why? Sure. I, I've been doing infrastructure since 1989. So for 20 years, I've been an advocate of freedom of choice infrastructure. And, you know, I, I've built systems and helped customers build systems that let people have freedom of choice of how they use that infrastructure. And... And I think that we're moving to the next era where freedom of choice is going to go beyond the silos that someone like Robert Zwicky would like to, or Robert Scoble would like to keep you in. His silo is broken. He can't he can't control you anymore. Nope. And the customer is going to have the freedom of choice of who they look at and how. And you know it's over for you, Robert. You're you're no longer in control of that audience. You know, and what's interesting a, about what I Craig... I already do that. That's why I give up my blog this year, pretty much. <laughs> well, you know, too bad. That's uh, ba too bad for the industry, I think, because uh, I, I think Robert's your blog's great. Well, uh, and yeah. the fact that, that you're scared because someone's going to put someone on there is unfortunate because it's it would only enhance it. I know, but you're you're fighting the last war now, Craig. We just won this war about 10 minutes ago, and <laughs> you're going back to it. <laughs> you're so 10 minutes ago, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I know if I just looked at my side wiki, I would have known. <laughs> but, well, you know, at, at, at the risk of going back to the war that's already been won, uh, you know, what Craig just talked about was silos, and Doc's not here, uh, unfortunate. Be well, Doc was trying to be here, but he's uh, answering the, the call of uh, uh, a hungry client. Uh, yeah. Well, that's always good. Money comes first, but, but, you know, even for Doc Searles. He has this whole vendor relationship management program, and what I've been trying to talk to Doc about um, is how much VRM relies on this ability for people to mash things up in their own browser. Not change people's content and redistribute, but just in their own browser, take things from various silos and put them together. That's what VRM is all about. And without the right to do that, we're all going to be at the, um, essentially the, the behest of the vendor because they'll claim the same thing Robert says. You don't no, have any I, right I, to Hold take on. I, you, I, you know, companies can't claim as strong a copyright as, as individual people can, right? You know, the, the stronger. The first of the, uh oh, but they do. People no, die. Do, but, you know, and also there's a difference between you putting a, a browser plugin on your side that does something versus, you know, a company like Google doing it. So. So Google can't write browser there, plugins. There's, so there's gradations of evil can't. there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that because Google is involved in this, it's more evil so, than if someone else would have. Been, but there are gradations of evil. I mean, I, you Robert, know, Robert, if you or I want downstream control of my content world existed, we wouldn't have Google. Google well, works because you know, it goes it around the web pretending I, there, to be a browser and then making a database from it instead. There, there. Look at it this way: Apple doesn't let you come into their store and set up a, a you know, a sh little shop in their store. There are rules and laws concerning that, yeah. business and what you're allowed to do in your place of business. And so, um, you're gonna have. It, it, it'll be interesting to see where the fights come up between. These See, once, once again, you're metaphorically making yeah, this you, a location, and this is not, a, not location a location conversation. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, can you expand on that, uh, Craig? Yeah, it, as, as Phil was saying before, this is about resources and control of virtual things, not a place. It's, you're not going to a place. I, it's, I think if it's, you tried to not a place argue that in front of a jury of 12 people, normal people, you would have a really tough time because they would look at normal this people. world in other as words, a location. Nobody but, who's but, Robert, that's only because long so, so, but they would show. look at it that way. <laughs> But that's well, only because that's not going to happen. So, so what? <laughs> that's only uh, well, the RIAA the has successfully uh, beat up grandmas who, you know, their kids were stealing music. Yeah, how's that so, going for them? The RIAA. Who pays their bills? The record company cartel, which yeah. is uh, in a death spiral. I'm, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, you know, no, legally, it, it, the law is written <laughs> for yesterday's technology. It's, the law is it's written by lobbyists. <laughs> 
<laughs> who are paid by the record company cartel to try yeah. and stave off uh, the innovations that have been developed by, among others, Steve Jobs, who you just cited. Absolutely. Okay, so the, the Steve Jobs is part of, I mean, this all goes back to the web services thing. Uh, the, the, the first minute that Microsoft started to support web services was the death knell for the idea that there's such a thing as a, a page. Yeah. Pages are uh, an interactive bunch of bits which are through AJAX and through XML conduits uh, can change uh, parts of the page uh, without changing, uh, without a refresh of the whole page. That is yeah. the new architecture, and this is what we are seeing on top of it. Yeah, we've yeah. called these things websites, and we've given them addresses, and we talk about going to them, but that doesn't mean that that's what they are. That's just the metaphor we use to help people understand it. That metaphor is going to change. Yeah, the travel and location metaphor for the Internet has got to shift. And what, the, the one that Phil and I have been working on to think about this is, is one of purpose-based or, you know, instead of, of location-based where I'm going to go somewhere and do something, what I want to do is, is how did we say it, Phil? Uh, uh, you want to be and know in, as somewhere. opposed to go and do. And and when I'm in the process of being knowing, I don't care about what location is being abused or not because it isn't a location. All right, so uh, I'd like to try and sort of uh, get a little bit out ahead of this conversation. So I think we've explored the uh, both sides. When we put up the interactive game, which will allow you to be able to vote for uh, side. Uh, Ron Hudson will says this is about as useful as Wave, and he has left the conversation. So there will be three bins. You will be able to play along at home uh, by voting for Unlimited Freedom, uh, Draconian uh, Lock-In on the part of, uh, of Visible Brands. <laughs> In other words, the You can't have my WordPress uh, <laughs> password. <laughs> okay, I, trust me, I... I got my own problems, <laughs> and uh, and then the so th there are basically going to be three different alternatives here. What's going to shake out here over the next few months? I noticed on Doc Searle's post, uh, he had a raft of them. Uh, he and Cliff Garish and uh, others have been sort of bouncing around some of these ideas uh, in an increasingly interesting way. And he cited, and I'm not sure whether this was before or after. Uh, the, the discussion about SideWiki. Craig, he talked about your comments, uh, your open letter to Steve Ballmer. Do you want to review what you said to Steve and what that's about? Sure. Um, we, uh, the, the stuff that uh, Kinetics is doing is brilliant in a couple of ways. One is that it leverages some identity infrastructure, mostly the the meta identity meta system selector, which of course the first instance of that was card space in Windows. Um, however, the current card space implementation doesn't let you do context automation because it needs to uh, mature a little bit. Um, so, Kim Cameron invited us to go up and and explore that a little bit. And in those meetings, it came down to the fact that that um, it would take maybe three or four hours of work for Microsoft to fix the problem and probably won't be released for two years or better <laughs> because of the way Microsoft releases infrastructure in the operating system release. And that that's controlled uh, ultimately according to whoever was talking about this by, by Steve uh, he's the guy that it has to go through in order to... Yeah, I don't want to name any names, but his, um, his uh, initials are Conrad. Anyway, um, <laughs> what can I say? Um, I, I, Ken Conrad, how does this got to do with the uh, uh, sorry, I, 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 I'm not sure I understand. It's like, no, not him. Um, the project manager. But, you know, he, basically... Um, what what happens is that that uh, Steve won't let in inbound or sorry in band changes to the operating system go out on the Tuesday releases. They have to go in the operating system. 
So if you make an infrastructure change to Windows out of band, no one will download it. It never gets to anybody's desktop. So the only way you can really get something on the desktop is if you're in band and you get released with the OS or with a service pack. Okay, so uh, do you think that this, just to sidestep the, uh, uh, you know, the specific roadblock of Steve Ballmer, uh, do you think that this is something that is not in Microsoft's interests? And that, and that's why it's not going oh, to happen. Oh, that Microsoft would love to resolve this because, you know, they they need this kind of technology to do their next advertising metaphor to try and, if they could only catch up with Google, and with Bling, you know, they need this in a in a in a bad way, and they can't do it. They're they're constantly so they're being held back by who? Steve Ballmer. But why is he is does he think this is disruptive to uh, some aspect of Microsoft's? Uh, See, I don't think he even knows not that, that not his that his policy. It's it, he doesn't know that his policy is stopping this. Uh, I couldn't it's hear not, what you said, Phil. Could you say it again? I said it's not that he's holding back this specific thing. There's just a policy of how operating system style. Uh, releases get done versus other releases, and the, the policy is essentially what holds it okay, back. Okay, so that it's Steve Sanofsky who's holding it up then. Uh, well, no, I mean Balmer gets to say what goes. It's it goes up beyond Steve uh, Sanofsky. Well, I, what I heard Phil say is that it's a process issue, and uh, Steve is he runs the trains. So, yeah, Steve Sanofsky runs the trains. Sanofsky, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, a few years ago, uh, when Kim Cameron and I were talking about some of these issues, the the guy that we felt uh, at the time was going to be like Godzilla and Bl and Bambi. Do you remember that movie? Oh yeah. Uh, was going to be Jim Alchin. Now Jim Alchin's not there anymore. So what I'm asking is whether or not there's a new Jim Alchin on the scene. Uh, is there somebody who's the enforcer who comes in and says, "No, we're not going to do that because." Uh, it's disruptive on some level to uh, uh, the Microsoft agenda. I th I think if Dave Weiner's right that Google's the new Microsoft, then Microsoft is the new Google, and they're the good guys here. And maybe this is a congenital problem, not a, a uh, not something that's been acquired. Well, you know, I guess it really doesn't matter the way Microsoft does this has relegated them to insignificance in this conversation anyway, and I don't think they're going to fix the problem in any way soon. So, so you it, think Google doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what they do. So Google's going to run with this. Oh, Google! See, no, Google's it's completely off their radar. Uh, it's they, you know, SideWiki aside. They they're not involved with it. There's not an organization inside um, Google that I know of that even has it in their radar, except the identity guys, and they're you know still worrying about single sign-on. It's they're not catching up. Kevin, I think I'm, I've lost I've lost the thread there a little bit. Well, so what we're, we're talking about is the context automation. Context automation, in other words, the role of identity in managing uh, right. the, the new infrastructure. I think that's that's kind of what I was saying about how CyberWiki could be better as well. I think identity alone, single sign-on, wasn't that compelling. But when you combine that with um, here's who here's who my friends are, here's my activities, then it gets interesting, and that's the pieces that we've been putting together at the last few IIWs, um, moving from just OpenID to OpenID plus OAuth plus portable contacts, and now adding in activity streams as well. So th that is bringing these contacts from across the web, bringing your sets of friends from one place to another, bringing the flow of events across, and feeding them back again. And yeah, with the, yeah, that, that, we're halfway through that tipping. We're at the point now where some sites do this. Um, you know, friend feed does it par excellence, obviously. Um, other sites are starting to do this, and people are starting to realize that, oh, you mean I can sign in and not have to type a whole bunch of crap? Um, I can sign in and the, the site will know who I am and who my friends are already and give me content that makes sense to me. That's nice. Um, and that's, we're a little way along that path, um, and, we, and we're starting to standardize that stuff so you can do it in lots of places, and we, I expect we can get a lot further along that path over the next year. That's that, so that's my take on how the two tie together. 
Yeah, and the, and the thing you're leaving out, I think, is the role of the selector in the whole identity conversation, which uh, Google seems to still be a little confused about, because OpenID and OAuth just by itself isn't aren't going to cut it. They, you've got to yeah. have the selector on the operating system as the framework for the identity uh, conversation to occur. Uh, without it, your the exposure is so huge. Um, so even with the selector, we have problems, but it's a lot better than any other mechanism we have so far. And you know, I I, I would love to see Google and what you're working on get the understanding of the importance of the selector. So what what do you mean by the selector? I, I've I've not I've not got the. Can you re-explain well, that I, idea I to me again? Not, I, I probably don't want to dive into the selector in this too much, but if you go over to the Information Card Foundation, there's a white paper on okay. the selector. Um, you mean the Information Card Selector? So, yeah, Information Card Selector. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, well, we'll Another explore card this. Space. Card uh, Space was the original Information Card Selector. Well, we'll, we'll explore this uh, in a future episode. So I think, oh, oh yeah, 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 got it. No, I, I, I remember the metaphor now. So I see what you, you're getting at with that. I think that um, de facto we're doing that by choosing which ID to log in with. That's the way we do, we're using selectors at the moment. We're saying, okay, I'll log into this site with my Facebook account. I'll log into this site with my Google account. I'll log into this site with my other account. That, see, that's the selector's the not involved with that. Okay, so then, I'm, then I'm still missing. Because I thought the selector was the point of... Um, the oh, selector is so a specific technology. I mean, it's it's a. I mean, I think I, I think one key idea here, Kevin, about selector that that Craig's making is the selector lives on the client, and fundamentally, there's a there's a difference between trying to do everything on the server and doing things at the help with the help of the client, and you know, like Steve said, that's probably a different discussion because it could go on for a while, but. And, and there would be some good debates there, I, I'm sure. But, but that's really the issue: is do you need help I, on I the see, client yeah. side in order to accomplish well, things? No, I got it. I mean, this is this is the thing we call the NASCAR problem um, in yeah. the Open ID world, yeah. which is where there are too many buttons for me to log in. I don't know which one to use. So you're saying that the value of putting it in the client is that it can know which ones you should use and pick that out for you. Well, the Na yeah. you know the NASCAR problem yeah. is really a, a symptom of the problem of the identity components being in the relying party or on the server and not in the client. Uh, but but there are other big, huge problems that you would get other symptoms of by not putting it in the client in the selector. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger yeah. than NASCAR problem. Yeah, you, I mean, but what you lose if it's in the client is you lose the ability to to move from machine to machine, which is, which is valuable. No, you don't lose that. You well, don't have. You know, if if it has to be in the client. If that know, was if, true, if you lost if it, I have, then what, if I have what to put Google, it into, into this phone? No, and, see, you can what is keep Google the using a, what's in the Google cloud using a profile the for if it's true that you lose it by moving from client to client? I mean, yeah, is it the profile not, the uh, uh, the collector of those types of preferences? Right, that's, but that's not that's not mediated by the client. That's mediated. That's on a server somewhere with an ID that you you log into. Yeah, but if you if you establish a ah. server somewhere okay. as as the repository for the preferences that you store on the client, when you mm -hmm. log on with a client, you suck down that information, and therefore you have no issue. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the VRM strategy. Uh, as far as I can understand it, which is you gain control through the use of your tools of what you want to express as your interest in gathering information from the network. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think, I think we're sort of approaching the same thing with different angles. I think to say that the, the selector has to be in the client is basically asking for a lot of change. Whereas if we can do parts of it server side and then fit that together with stuff in the client to improve the experience, I, th I think that that's where it fits together. So I, th I don't think we're disagreeing on on ends; we're just disagreeing on which order you do things in. Yeah, and a I, mean, lot I, of think, I, I think you're right, Kevin, because ultimately, Open ID is going to be most useful if there is something built into the browser or somewhere else that helps manage it. Right, or uh, or, right. For, or if it just vanishes into invisibility, you know, if you're if you're using OpenID to log in, and you don't realize it because it just worked, which is which is something we're starting to see now. I don't know why we're looking at me. Uh, 
Uh, uh, I'm going to wind this down. Robert? Got nothing else. How's your page going? My page? Are you are you filling it up with uh, uh, copyrighted material that nobody can uh, spam? <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, and you won't be on uh, FriendFeed anymore because they are co-conspirators in this, uh, uh, you know, spreading oh, no. <laughs> uh, information around uh, in uh, in widget form. That's right. If I can't be in control, I'm not gonna blog anymore. <laughs> no, I you don't let me control. You misunderstood me. I gave up and I went to friend feed and Twitter because I I knew it was over. <laughs> oh, so it's capitulation. Capitulation, baby. Excellent. I also don't have a page view model to protect, so there you go. Yeah, no, you you're sort of the poster boy for this new model. Yeah. Yeah, it's like where's Scoble today? I don't know. He's all around. By, by the way, my photos are in the public domain. Take them and steal them. Mash them up. Cut them up. <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> hey, well, as long as videos, it's under 100 videos, it doesn't matter because they're so big. You know, if you if you can download them and remash them, you're probably uh, going to get a job somewhere, anyways. So, yeah, that's, we're, we're fixing that by making the bandwidth better. Yeah. Well, well it, exactly. And if you if you want to download videos, you got to host them somewhere. So I I got a small little company in uh, San Antonio, Texas, to help you with that. Uh, well, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, uh, as always, I want to thank uh, Rackspace for their sponsorship and their uh, support on the technical as well as the uh, creative side. Uh, Rob Lejess, in, in particular, has been a, uh, a remarkable source of uh, information and uh, insight. Uh, and that's two Republicans that I'm thanking today. I'd like to thank... Uh, <laughs> 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 I'd like to thank... Uh, the other one, uh, Phil Wembley, uh, for making the transition. Uh, we're going to have to do another show. I mean, all of these shows are about the fact that RSS is dead. So, uh, you know, it's really one theme. <laughs> RSS is dead. Not your You're son. Welcome. Your new content son is not is dead. dead. Not RSS. Our content's just getting started. No, content content's is dead. just getting started. But we're taking your content and we're going to mix it up. <laughs> That's right. That's content. Knock yourself out. Uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Craig Burton. Uh, for uh, making an, an appearance, and uh, we'll have to. I I still don't understand the selector stuff either, so we'll have to have a remedial uh, workshop in order to do that. When's the next I I W? By the way, Soon. Phil, November third. November third through the fifth at the Computer History Museum, and uh, love to have everybody there. Right, and Kevin Marsh, you'll be there, of course. I'll be there. Yes, I'm not sure I've actually bought a ticket yet, but I will be there. All right, and I'd like to I thank him one. and his support. And as always, this uh, show is TriCast uh, using the uh, incredible New Tech TriCaster, and we want to thank them for their support. And you'll be hearing about some uh, interesting things that are starting to uh, uh, appear coming from that company and uh, perhaps uh, some uh, other companies that are going to be involved in in letting this kind of real-time experience uh, start to move out across the network where we stitch together multiple uh, ideas and information on what appears to be a single page. This is Steve Gilmore, and this has been the Gilmore Gang. Thanks to everybody who showed up, and especially those who didn't. There will be a next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Bye.